Fantastic. Almost. Yeah. Well, welcome everyone to our Q&A tonight with the senior leadership team. We are really glad that you have joined us. We are recording this so that parents can watch this at a later time as well. So I just want to introduce ourselves first and then we'll cover a bit of housekeeping. So firstly, my name is Trevor and I'm the principal here. Hi, I'm Paul. I'm the business manager here at Kalula Christian College. Hi, I'm Sue. I'm the director of teaching and learning. And I'm Ross. I'm the deputy principal, also in charge of wellbeing for our students. Excellent. So we've had a number of questions that have been sent through to us, which we will work through tonight. And uh, if anyone gets online and wants to ask additional questions, there is a chat uh, as well that people can add to. So between us, we'll do our best to monitor uh, anyone who might be watching at home live and has a chat, uh, has a question for us. So let's get into the questions. Okay, so I'm the new person here at the school. I started it earlier in the year, but um, I'd just like to ask my team here. So what separates Kalula Christian College from other schools in our area? Well, I think it's really hard to answer that because without getting into the other schools and knowing what they offer, and I think every, every school is really trying to do their best to deliver a great education. So I guess I would say that at Kula Christian College, we've got a great record of academic improvement for our students. Uh, and so that means that your children will experience great learning at CCC. They'll make great progress according to the expectations that you as parents have for them. And we know that this will be different for every child. Some will struggle and some will excel, but we have amazing staff, both teachers and teacher aides, uh, and they will be able to help all of our students to make really great progress. I think that having a really caring and safe place to learn also sets us apart. We, we still have some bullying happening at times, but I think it is really low here at the school. And we seem to be able to get on top of incidents really quickly. And parents who have uh, joined recently have commented to me when they've caught up with me just to say that their son or their daughter feels really safe here at the school. And that's really exciting for me to hear. And we have a great outdoor ed program. So, Ross, tell us about the app to end program. Oh, I, I think it's quite unique in, in Queensland, actually, our program, because it's embedded into our curriculum. So uh, students experience outdoor ed camps uh, from primary school. They go on year-level camps. But once they get to year seven, they do outdoor education as part of their year seven course, year eight course. Mm -hmm. And then in year nine and ten, they can choose outdoor ed education as an elective. Uh, which a vast majority of our students choose. Uh, they have lessons, they go on different camps and excursions across eight units of study in year nine and 10. And then in year 11 and 12, they can continue uh, towards a career in outdoor um, careers, uh, outdoor leadership through our Rec Studies program at, at, at CERT. Two, two, so two in, in outdoor leadership. So plenty of opportunities in outdoor education. Mm. Uh, as well as uh, Duke of Ed camps this weekend. We're taking students away on a Duke of Ed camp. If you don't know about Duke of Ed, you should check it out. It's a, a wonderful program that's been around for a long, long time. Mm. And what about language uh, lessons? You know, is that set us apart? What's different yeah. about what we do? Well, I'm excited because we teach Spanish here. We're probably, well, we're the only school in the Gympie region that teaches Spanish and uh, we believe it's a really useful language to learn. The beauty is that our students learn it from prep and continue all the way through into, into the middle years of high school. And uh, so that's very, <laughs> that's, uh, that's, that's very good because you have that consistency going right through from primary into high school. Mm -hmm. And it's a language that's uh, very useful with travel and also trade and also mission if you're interested in, in the mission field as well. Fantastic. We have a really clear mission as well here at Kalula Christian College and clear values. <laughs> Our staff are committed uh, to discussing and reviewing these statements regularly 
uh, to ensure that we're all on the same page. We have a shared understanding and we can work together to embed our mission, our vision and our values into everyday life here at the college. We also pray together as a team throughout the week, every week, and this helps us to work together and to prioritise the same focus throughout the year. Hey, before we go on, though, yeah. I, you know, if we're talking about what makes us unique or different from other yeah. schools, I, I also love uh, the fact that we've introduced uh, instrumental immersion into year four this year. It's the first year, uh, and this is a, a fully funded program, so it's part of uh, what we provide at CCC for every year four student. They learn an instrument, they get lessons, weekly lessons, they're part of our junior concert band, and that continues on all through the year as part of the curriculum in year four. And oh, I'm just so excited about what's mm. happened already, even with COVID interrupting everything. Mm. And uh, we know that when students are involved in a an ongoing music program, they're going to do better socially, emotionally, language-wise, um, literacy, numeracy, and teamwork and all of those things and we've already seen some of those things happen and we're only in the initial launch year so i'm looking forward to seeing what happens in yep. the future too so that's really unique in, in Gippy. absolutely and i think as a as a christian college our strong faith and beliefs that god has a plan for each of us uh, and jesus wants to have a personal relationship with all of us challenges us and encourages us to give our very best to love and care for the students in our care because we know they are God's children and, um, you know, that just encourages us to, to be our best. We also we have service learning programs, but I think we might talk about that a little bit later. Yeah. So we also have our CCC Clear Values suit. How are these clear values? values applied in the classroom and the school community? Mm. So we build um, specific lessons uh, around clear values into our pastoral care program throughout year levels, throughout the college, all through the year. But students are regularly reminded of those values in uh, chapel, in lesson time. We use them um, as a conversation piece as well. When we're just working with students and talking with them through the day, we try to use that language and refer to the values so that we can discuss behaviour, interactions, and that becomes an embedding in the culture. It's really exciting when we hear siblings or parents refer to our values as well, and that would suggest that it's really becoming embedded. Uh, and kids speak to one another about, you know, showing respect and and being courageous and, uh, you know, recognising one another's learning and mm. learning behaviours. Um, we have uh, some simple strategies also where we're uh, evidencing our values uh, on our screens throughout classrooms mm. every day. We're flashing those up. Um, students are walking past posters and um, little images of our values throughout the day as well. Uh, and we recognise the growth and change in one another's character as we give merits to students uh, throughout lessons throughout the day as well. So um, those merits are really important too. Excellent. So how how do we see the technology being integrated into the classroom at each stage of education? Um, and I guess through through COVID as well. Like Paul, what did you see during the COVID phase? So I, I would think this um, adoption of technology in the classroom, it was a, um, a great step forward because as we had to suddenly pivot to, um, to learning from home, the staff and the students were familiar with the apps and the platforms um, and the expectations that, um, that that brought as a as a learning style. So I think that was evident that we were already, I believe, a bit ahead of the game yeah. in that area. Yeah, yeah having the infrastructure there already. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. 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 What about since um, when the last few years, Ross, if COVID wasn't part of our history for the last few months, you know, are we on track with technology? I think we're actually leading the way. And, and we've got a great corporate partnership with Productivity who have helped, uh, helped us in that regard. Yeah. Uh, and we've had visionary leaders, I guess, over, over a number of years that have helped us to 
to spearhead, I guess, our our foray into technology. We've been using iPads in primary schools for many years since mm. iPads were first available, I think. And uh, now we have a, a really well-established iPad program in primary. We have our BYID in secondary, so from year seven onwards, uh, a device not unlike these that are used by, by students in classes. But I would say that we try to get a really good balance between yeah. the use of yeah. technology and, you know, uh, the, the more interactive face-to-face -face stuff, writing, you know, mm -hmm. so, so there is a good balance there. And it's not necessarily one student to one device either. There's a lot of collaboration yeah. over one device mm -hmm. too. Yeah. yeah. Um, these screens, for example, they're in most of our classrooms and by the use of a, a program called Vivi, it allows us to, to have really integrated delivery of digital uh, uh, digital content, mm. uh, which has been an excellent uh, part, of, part of what we do in classrooms. The other thing I think that's been really good in the last few years is the introduction of our LMS, our, our learning management system, through what we call our, our student management interface. So we call it, it's called TAS, and we use that with students in Student Cafe. Our parents use uh, teacher kiosk, uh, our parent lounge and, yeah. and teachers use the, the teacher kiosk. And within that, then, all of the assessment can be visible, announcements, homework, uh, diaries, um, parent permission forms. So we have a really good connection through that platform for students, parents um, and teachers. It en enhances the communication and ensures that no one is missing out um, through that mm. program. Excellent. So how does Kalua Christian College support children with different learning styles and different needs? Mm. Mm. We recognise that we're a community, first of all, and that each member of our community has different uh, gifts and talents and interests and experiences. Uh, so as a school, we strive to support each learner uh, to achieve high expectations, but to do that within our community. Um, we're really well resourced in our classrooms um, with learning support for students who may benefit from other strategies or a modified program. And we have staff with skills and interests in a lot of different areas. And so even though we may not be a massive school, we seem to have a vast array of activities and opportunities for our kids through every day. There's lunchtime programs, after school programs, um, and there are chances for our students to develop new skills and interests, to work with friends and peers from other year levels and age groups, to work together as family groups at times, um, but most of all to consolidate their understandings so that there is a good foundation for future mm -hmm. learning. Yeah, so it's not just about academic needs, mm -hmm. but it's also social, emotional, um, physical, um, artistic needs as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Now, I mentioned earlier that I really believe that we have low levels of bullying and, um, and I think every school has some issues at times. What do we do as a school to deal with those issues when they do arise? Yeah, thanks, Trevor. There, there are a lot of things that we do and I guess the biggest thing that happens at CCC is that we're doing things before those issues arise. Yeah. yeah. And, and to me, that's really the important step. You know, it's too late once uh, once you've got the white ants in the building. Mm -hmm. You know, we've put up protection barriers there. You know, we've we've preempted that um, that under undermining white anting of, of bullying and negative behaviour before it starts. So we have a lot of programs in place around education. So. One of those is Program Achieve. A lot of schools use it, and it's a social emotional program that mm -hmm. develops uh, uh, resilience in students mm -hmm. and teaches them how to interact in, a, in appropriate um, and um, positive ways. We also have other things like our biblical studies programs, and we have focus terms on different aspects of, of social. Yeah engagement between students and, and uh, so that's there as a starting point. So after that, then we have our class teachers and our PC teachers as the first sort of response. 
uh, so that they can guide students in learning how to how to interact appropriately because a lot of it's to do with education yeah. and in developing skills mm. uh, rather than someone you know deliberately being nasty and so we teach the students how to resolve problems and we have a couple of strategies that are embedded in primary in particular in our classrooms. So I'll see posters on the wall. This is how I can resolve the problems. Uh, this is how I can ask for help. And then that happens sort of with the pastoral care and, and the, the, the classroom teacher. And then we have our year level coordinators. So primary year level coordinators, secondary year level coordinators. And that's the next step where it might need a little bit more support a little bit more guidance or an intervention and maybe some consequences if things aren't, aren't going well. And then obviously we can come up to me as in charge of wellbeing as a deputy principal. We might have to take it up to this level. And once we get to my level, you know, we'd obviously be engaging with parents and, and trying to find out, dig a bit deeper as to why there's an ongoing problem. We have a school psychologist who's just come on board this year, and that's fantastic because sometimes the needs are deeper than just a uh, rubbing someone up the wrong way. Mm -hmm. And so we do have that psychologist available. We've got our responsible thinking team who can work with students on developing strategies and uh, support services you talked about, an enrichment unit and, and other other resources, our chaplains who are on hand to help out as well. So there's a lot of ways that we can support students when a problem arises. But I think you're right, Trevor, we don't have a lot of problems because mm. we've done the groundwork beforehand. Yeah. yeah. I think the culture is yeah. one that it's it's unusual to see it, to see social challenges happening. And so students who are not involved even see it as something unusual and they're very quick to say, oh, you know, I'm not happy with that or I'm not comfortable yeah. with that and they'll talk to a teacher or even talk to their friends about it. So mm -hmm. it gets eliminated, I think, fairly quickly as well. Yeah. I think we, we have a thing called peer pressure like everyone does. Yeah. But here I think the peer pressure is... Yeah is a positive peer yeah, pressure. I think so. so when students come from other schools, they do experience pressure, but it's it's pressure to to conform, conform positive to that, to that positive culture of yeah. the classroom or the school. Yeah. Um, and we've seen that quite a lot, haven't we? Yeah. I had a parent call me and um, just, just to say that their son said to them, it's amazing, we're actually learning in class. Like, you know, as <laughs> we're not, there's not people driving each other and giving each other a hard time and stuff. I look around and people are looking at the teacher and they're learning and that's like, that was unusual for this student, and, you know, but he will just conform to that. That's what happens in these classes. Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Um, sometimes there are times when parents need to raise a concern. Yeah. What process do we have in place for that? Well, can I jump in and say, I think we need to define what is the problem. Mm. And so if, if parents or students can really think about, is it a, a curriculum learning mm -hmm. problem to do with what I'm trying to study, or is it a social, emotional well-being issue? Mm. And, and once you've sort of determined where that sits, then that, that guides who we want to, we want to contact. And if it's, if it's a classroom issue with what they're learning, the class teacher is yep. ideally placed as the, as the first yeah. port of call. Uh, if it's something around wellbeing, it would most likely be the pastoral care teacher. And then from there, we can go access the support services. We've got quite a few different options there, year level coordinators and, and beyond. Sometimes it goes beyond that, like we go through those early steps, but the, the parent might still have concerns that hasn't been um, fully addressed there. Where does it go to after that? So we have a, a grievance process. Um, the problem is not resolved at, at those um, levels. So the matter that can then be referred to the principal or in extremely rare cases to the board. Hmm. Um, but however, there's nuances to every um, every agreement, so I won't just go through the, the, the dot points here. But um, throughout the process, we want it to not be an adversarial style. We mm. want it to work collaboratively, and we really want the best outcome for for your student. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. yeah. 
Okay, one of the other questions we had is, can you explain the difference between the transition years? So that's seven and eight and years nine and 10 you know, in senior studies. Yeah, yeah. So we know that um, a number of our families, their, their children um, begin with us in the primary years. And we're in a really fortunate situation that we're a school that is a P-12 campus. We have an ELC attached. So a number of our families are with us for a really long time. Hmm. Um, we want to ensure that um, our students, whether they are new to the college in year seven and year eight, or whether they have come up from our primary years, there's a really smooth transition and a gentle introduction into secondary. Mm. And so seven and eight are really critical, um, a really critical learning stage or a developmental stage. And we know that um, those uh, early teen years are times when we're really working out who we are and who our people are, and we get a, um, we have a, an identity that develops in a group. And so teaching and learning in seven and eight is quite unique. It's not the same as primary, but it's also not the same as what we would see later on in secondary. And so our teachers in the middle years in seven and eight are really guiding young people to develop some uh, resilience, further resilience, some self-management, also understanding who they are, how they think and what they believe. And so we manage seven and eight quite unique. Um, nine and ten then builds from there and that's the bridge between seven and eight the early teen years and it's not quite the senior stage yet and so again we find that young people in, in nine and ten they're developing a deeper identity of who they are they want to be themselves but they still need to be in a team and a group um, it's also a stage when they're starting to really understand what they enjoy, what they're interested in, what they might pursue later on. And so the subjects that we offer in 7 and 8 are very broad. Uh, in 9 and 10, we start to offer opportunities for kids to really experience their gifts and their talents and their interests. Um, so it's a good chance to dip your toe in the water in a lot of different learning areas. Um, and then as we end year 10 and move into the senior phase of 11 and 12, that's the time that young people are really becoming quite individual in pursuing a course of study. Um, and we're in a unique situation, I believe, as a college. We have three pathways available for kids in the senior phase. Uh, we have a ministry pathway. We're really proud of that. It's Christian ministry in a Christian college. Um, so our ministry pathway partners against our practical pathway. We have a lot of traineeships, vet qualifications uh, that are available through our strong connections in our local community. And then we obviously have an academic pathway as well. And the academic courses that we offer are a broad range for a school our size, I think yeah. it's pretty amazing. Absolutely. We offer a number of general courses and applied courses. Uh, students who are pursuing a university uh, learning program later on will be well equipped with a broad range of general subjects. And those who aren't quite certain or perhaps particularly interested in practical subjects may take a greater percentage of applied subjects um, to build their skills and talents. Um, but we have students who really choose across those three pathways, so ministry, practical and academic. And the one little piece that is an addition to our academic program is our existing partnership with the Uni of the Sunshine Coast, and they um, provide opportunities for our students who choose to go that way to uh, gain some university credit to lead into further study after school. Thanks, Steve. Now, when I was at school, I got to do temp and bowling as one of my extracurricular activities. Uh, and, and I've always been interested in, you know, crafts and outdoor pursuits and anything to get me out of the classroom, really. <laughs> but for our students, uh, do we have much in the way of curricular, extracurricular opportunities? Yeah, all, I think there's all kinds of things for different students, different ages, so um, I'm happy for people to throw a few in as you think of them, but I'm aware of um, some Bible study groups that happen, some of which are led by older students, which I think is really exciting. Uh, there's a chess club, a gardening club, 
there's a an environmental group like sustainability, yeah. uh, which I think is really great for those young young people in particular really getting involved in that. What are some others the lunchtime activities? Can you think of? I can't think of any other. Well, in particular, <laughs> we started a few years ago by a teacher. She had a number of years six girls that were really struggling with their social interactions, and so oh, said, "Let's yeah. start a a club for those girls that are just." you know, getting into that preteen years, and it's very challenging mm. friendship-wise. And so they started the Fab Club Friday, Fridays at break, and that has gone on. Uh, uh, we've got a teacher aide and a teach, another teacher running it now. have a lot of girls go along to that, and, uh, yeah, so that one's a good one. Excellent. Uh, we also have some sports academies that we're very excited about. They've just started in the last few years. So we have a netball academy that has many uh, both uh, girls and boys involved in that. Uh, we also have a football academy. Or some of you might call it a soccer academy, but it's a football <laughs> academy. That's the uneducated. <laughs> That's <isn't> right. <laughs> um, and I, I would love to see that area grow. I'd love to see, uh, I know there's, we've got a lot of keen students playing touch football, uh, playing volleyball, and, you know, I'd love to support those as well as, uh, as teachers uh, and even as parents become interested in uh, getting involved uh, with us as a school. If you're interested in coaching a particular sport and you'd like to partner with one of our staff, um, just putting COVID aside, I guess, for the moment until we work that out. But, yeah, we'd love for you to be involved and in helping us out with that. We also have a few families that are dedicated equestrian families, mm -hmm. and so they go and compete together so as, as a school team, so that's really exciting as well. Yeah, just point out also we have our neighbours space at lunchtime yeah, which it, yeah. it's not a club but we have so many students mm. that that uh, you know are desperate to get down to our nature space which includes some tracks some a, a dam natural environment down there and it's it's a free play area and mm. Oh, we just have a really good time down there catching yeah. tadpoles and making cubby houses and things. And so although it's not extracurricular, it's certainly a place mm. that our students love to engage with, with nature and and in, I guess, imaginative play and uh, with, with friends as well. Absolutely. And Ross, would you say that the service opportunities that we have, have like that's a, an extracurricular that not everyone has to be involved in, but... Yeah, well, exactly. So we had service built into our year nine ten course as a as a part of their curriculum, and and then everyone in that class gets an opportunity to choose a service activity as part of that. Mm -hmm. But we also have other ways that we can serve. So I'm thinking of um, Solomon Islands, mm -hmm. our ministry trip once every two years, where we go over there for about fifteen days to serve. We have. Um, the primary schools, we go yeah. and visit the primary schools and run RI programs mm. with the students. And, and then the chaplains are really involved in that as well. Yeah, very much so. Mm. And then there are other ones that just come up, like we serve coffee. How long ago was it we served coffee to our emergency services? Was that oh. just last year? Yeah. yeah, it was last year. I think year. it was last year. Yeah. So, so there are other ad hoc ones where we go to aged care facilities or mm. we'll do other things. So there's lots of ways. And also through that Duke of Ed program that I talked about, we encourage service through. That's one of the strands in, in Duke of Ed, mm. the service component. There's also some of the high school students um, help cook meals or actually cook the meals. Um, yeah, that's right. The, the times in class or lunchtime for the um, Faith in Action program. Yeah. Yeah, I'm more than PNF, so. Exactly right. Yeah. So there are, are opportunities for us to connect outside, but there's also service opportunities inside as well. Mm. And some of those lunchtime programs are service programs. But we have, again, it's because of the nature of us being a P12 school, the unique opportunity of our secondary kids buddying with our primary kids. Yeah. And we see that in a variety of ways through every week uh, here at school. Yeah. Hmm. So we've heard a lot about student involvement. So what opportunities are there for parents to get involved into the school? Well, we love having parents involved. And I think it, maybe it sounds a little bit cliche, but it really does take a village to raise a child. And, and I guess that's how we 
see what we're doing here at the school. We want to work closely with you as parents to be able to support your children's growth and their learning. So I always say at interviews, parents are warmly invited to be involved in classrooms. Now, obviously, we paused that for some time with COVID and uh, all of what that meant for us, but we really want to have uh, parents involved in the classrooms and there's lots of different things that they can be doing. And as Paul mentioned, we, the, the Faith in Action is part of the, uh, the PNF as well, and that's a really strong group of um, mums and dads, and they are really committed to building community here at the school and supporting us in the work that we do. So I would really, even if you don't want to come in and volunteer your time, being involved in the, the PNF Association is a, a really good investment as well. Yep, very true. All right. Well, our last question, I think it's our last, yes, our last question is, and I'm going to ask each of us and myself included, what does the senior leadership team like about Kalula Christian College? Paul, start so with you. As I stated before, I'm new to the school. I started the start in January. Um, but I find myself working with a great group of, of staff, dedicated staff, and even the discussion there, you've seen the passion come through. Um, I was particularly impressed with the teamwork and the positive attitude that the, the teachers had in the development of new teaching approaches as we had to switch quickly to learning from home during COVID. It was, um, it was a lot of work, but it's it was, amazing, it was also um, yeah. energising for some of yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So myself sitting in in the business office, it was, it was uh, yeah, good to watch that. Mm. Also, I found the school board to be very engaging and they wanted yeah. to see the best from the school. They wanted it to excel and to develop its great reputation, you know, further into the future. Yeah, yeah. great. I love working here because it's given me opportunities to grow and to develop mm. and to be a learner as well. Yeah. Um, Ross and I have been at the college for a really long time. <laughs> um, purposefully, purposefully. Uh, but I really believe in Christian schooling. It's something that's much more than an academic education. It's more than just teaching. Um, but saying that, we want to make sure that what we do is really excellent. It's of a high quality and we're offering our students and their families something very rich. Um, it's a God-given opportunity to partner with parents in guiding and shaping a young person to see and know God and to serve him uh, with their gifts and their talents as they discover those. Um, watching young people discover who they are and seeing them grow and learn is really amazing. And it is a privilege. And I think we've been here at the college for so long now that I'm in the unique position of working beside staff that I've actually taught <laughs> at school uh, and to see them return here as God-inspired staff members is something really special. But to watch our students grow and then hear their stories afterwards of where mm. God has called them and where they've been led to live and be and work is really amazing. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I guess for me, I, I reflect on our own experience because our children came here from, you know, prep and they went all the way through to, to grade 12. And, you know, our experience as parents was that they were really loved and cared for uh, by the staff and by the community here, that they were taught the gospel, which was really important to us, that they heard the, the good news of, of Jesus Christ um, and his saving grace. I, for us, they grew in character mm. um, and they achieved well academically. Mm. And, and probably really importantly, they were they were encouraged to build confidence and also really positive friendships. And all of that was a great launching pad for our for our own children. Mm. And so for me, whenever I'm talking to people parents about, the prospective parents about coming to the CCC, I do refer to our own experience as parents because that's our testimony of yeah. what we experienced yeah. and I'm just so grateful for what we had and I'm so excited to be a part of what the current team here at CCC is doing for this new generation of students coming through. Yeah. So it just continues that tradition um, that was established way back however many years ago the school started. <laughs> 
and it continues today. And to yeah. me, that's that's what I love. Yeah. And it's never changed from that mission. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I think for me, it's the people at all levels. Uh, so Paul talked a bit about that as well. The, the staff here are amazing. Uh, to, same as what you said, Paul, they're, they're passionate about what they do, uh, excited about what they do. They make this school a great community, uh, not just a workplace. Yeah. And that's not just the teachers, uh, it's every staff member just working together, getting alongside each other. And I think that through the challenge of COVID, as you know, maybe as unpleasant as it was, um, it was amazing just to see all of that different staff getting alongside each other, teachers and non-teachers and admin staff. It was just, yeah, that was fantastic. And the students here, like, there really is a very positive attitude uh, of the students. Uh, and so as I walk through the, the playground, it's great just to say hi to people and for students in prep or students in year seven or students in year 12, just to, to say hi as they wander past. So that's great. And our community wouldn't be a community without our parents being involved as well. So I love getting to know our parents, whether that's uh, at the PNF meeting or just dropping off, picking up, saying hello, uh, grabbing a coffee down at Solar Grounds. That's always great to catch up with people yeah. there as well. So that's, well, yeah, that's what I love. It's the people here that make it a great school. Well, Thank you to our panel here, our team, of uh, having, a, having a chat with you tonight. Um, I don't think there's been any questions on the chat no. so far. So I think we're going to finish up there. I think we will certainly do this again sometime. We may look at another platform because we understand that the Teams platform may have been a challenge for some people to get on to. But that's all we've got for tonight. So thank you and enjoy the rest of your evening. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks.